Hey, do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. Oh, you're getting spooky scary. I'm getting real spooky scary because, dude, it's almost Halloween. We are legit a little less than a week away. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to hold it back, man. I'm trying to hold back the excitement because you know what happens the day after Halloween. It's Christmas time, baby! It's the first day of Christmas! And I've already got my season's greetings Snoopy mug. Now, don't get me wrong. We've had this conversation before. We both love Halloween. We do. We love Halloween. We're horror yep. fans. We met each other at a horror convention. Like our roots. We have horror roots. It's in our blood. But by the time Halloween comes around, I'm kind of over it, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's never a break from horror. So yeah. like October's just kind of a, it's like an overdose of horror. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> so. and I, I was having that conversation the other day where I was just like, by the time Halloween comes around, I want to do anything that's not horror related because i feel like the entire month of october i have to do things that are horror related the combination of halloween and christmas for as long as we'll do this show there's plenty of christmas horror movies for us to pick for the final october there's gonna be no shortage of them and as a matter of fact you and i have talked about that where we've refrained about talking about certain ones because we kind of want to save them we can't sit there and talk silent night deadly night one through five in in the one month of October. We're going to have to space that out year by year. Yeah. So they're just too good to and cover. I've been, <laughs> I've been making a list for us as I've been like, because now I'm on this kick where I'm like, I'm just going to binge watch all of the old Twilight Zone. So like I'm keeping an open eye for like, ooh, Christmas episode of Twilight Zone. Write yeah. that down for next October. You know what I mean? Like Before we get to our main event here, I just want to say if you are one of the people in my life who have ever praised Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, but are now bitching and moaning about Halloween kills, go fuck yourself. Go fuck I, yourself. You have been you have been very I here's the thing that's the craziest thing yeah. to me is that the way that you're de- like, I know you. The, yeah, you're defending Halloween Kills as if it is your number one with a bullet favorite <laughs> film in the franchise. <laughs> and I know that at the end of the day, you probably feel the same as me, which was like it is perfectly in the middle of the franchise as a whole. It's one hundred percent. Like seriously, Halloween Kills isn't even close to my favorite Halloween movie. <laughs> but it annoys the hell out of me. The like. The, the hatred that people are having for this movie because it doesn't make any sense. The same people that I've seen praise Halloween 5, yeah. that I've seen talk about liking both cuts of Halloween 6. Both cuts suck. Sorry, yeah. people. They both suck. These same people are hating Halloween Kills so hard, and it just does not make any sense. Is it great? No. But neither is 90% of the Halloween franchise. If I didn't know any better, I would have said that David Gordon Green watched Midnight Mass before this and was like, yeah. we got to have those monologues in this yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get to the main event. It well, is hold on. Here's, here's, here's my into thing. This recording. My, my thing is, is that, in my opinion, Halloween Kills is more fun than Midnight Mass. I'm laying down the gauntlet right here. 
I would agree that it's more fun. And you want to know another movie that's fun but received a lot of hate back in 2006 when it first came out? Black Xmas. There we go. We got we made it full circle. <laughs> so I will say this about my recent watch of Black Xmas. Yes. I still love this movie. This movie's a lot more mean than I remembered it being. Okay. All right. So so here's my thing, and I need you not to be mad at me. I refuse to rewatch it right now. Okay. Until Christmas. Because I it's it is a movie that I always watch when I have the Christmas tree up and and the lights are on and everything. But I've seen it enough. I'm ready to go. But I don't disagree with you. This movie <laughs> is mean as fuck. Yeah. And it's like... It's still fun. But it's it so is much like, fun. I think, the, I think the problem is it definitely was made at a time where we were very mean in horror movies. Yes. Like, tonally, it fits in with, like, House of Wax it fits in with like Hostel and the Hills Have Eyes remake and like all of these other films from that era. They are very violent. They are very graphic and they're very mean. Yeah. I think what hurts Black Xmas a little bit is that you cast it a lot of big name actors and actresses that we as people already like. And yeah. you didn't give us enough reason to not like them. So like seeing them get really fucking murdered <laughs> in like a graphic way yeah isn't as satisfying i don't want to say satisfying but like when you're watching a friday the 13th movie where you kind of hate all of these kids you're like just along for the ride you know when i'm yeah, watching yeah. when i'm watching friday the 13th 5 the the new beginning which is also a very mean spirited movie they also do a good job of making most of those characters very unlikable. <laughs> so yeah. you're just like, all right, great. But like, I kind of like these characters too much to watch their eyeballs get physically ripped out of their skull <laughs> multiple times. My view on Black Xmas, and we're coming at this from the lens where a 2019 version of Black Christmas does not exist. Okay. I think the, the problem people had with Black Xmas 2006 is the same problem that people have with Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween, where we took all the subtleties of the original and the suspense, and we're like, fuck that. We're going to have incest and white trash people and blood and eyeballs ripping out, and it's going to be fucking crazy. And you know what? I like the Rob Zombie Halloween remake, and I like Black Xmas a fucking lot. I would even compare it to, um, and I don't know where you stand on this, but I would even compare this to the 2019 Child's Play, where oh, I liked it. Yeah, I did too. That was a lot of fun. I, where I was like, hey, you know what really sucks when you do a remake when it is literally note exact, for note, beat yep. for beat, the previous movie. Now, yeah. Black Xmas, almost like I almost dislike that they didn't just take the easy route of treating this like a sequel to the original, like yeah. instead of like creating this other character of Billy who already had like this whole backstory with blah, 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 blah. Cause I don't think that the character in the first black Christmas just like stopped killing after that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, <laughs> like they found this dude who was like continuing to like break into houses or whatever, but like none of them realized that he's tied to like this sorority house. Yeah. And now, you know, 30 something years have passed and he breaks out and goes back to like where he first started killing. Cause I wrote down that similarly to scream Four and all of Halloween Two, I could do without the hospital stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I feel like this movie for a movie that literally takes entirely inside this sorority house I hate that it just like jumps to the hospital for the last 10 minutes of the movie. Like just make the ending where the whole film is taking place. We don't need this like change of scenery. And I also have like mixed feelings. Like it's not a perfect movie, but it is a very fun movie. And that's what I'm trying it to say. Very, like, it is a very fun movie. And I think what does it for me is honestly the cinematography. This movie it's well is shot. so fucking colorful. And I mean, it's even gross when, too. It though, is. It's it, so gross. And when we go, to like you said, go to like the Sin City aspect of it is it's like 
everything is so grimy except for the Christmas tree and yeah. his yellow skin. And when he makes the the human cookies and it's like, this is insane. But the difference is you were talking about this being meaner than you remember. And I brought this up on when we guessed it on the Jersey Ghouls where the fun ratio has yeah, to be Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The fun ratio has to be up there. What was the what the fuck is the name of the Oh, movie? Better Watch Out was the better one watch we just out. could not deal with, yeah. Better Watch Out to me is just a mean movie that does not become fun enough to be entertaining. Where in my opinion Black Xmas is so bonkers, so batshit crazy that I, I just can't help but continue watching it and love every second of it. And it's just it's one of those movies that I just want to take to friends and be like, have you watched this? Like, have you seen Black <laughs> Black Xmas? Because the first time I watched it, my I didn't see this until way after it came Oh, I out. saw this opening night at in theaters. Really? With a group I, of I, friends in college. Yeah. We we were like, yo. And we loved it. Like yeah. we all walked out like I was the only one who had seen the original Black Christmas, but I had read all the reviews, not like in detail, but I had, I had read already on the internet that people were like, yo, they, this is fucking nothing like yeah. Black Christmas. So I was like, all right, I know what I'm going into. Let's do this. I can tell you, I can pinpoint the exact minute. It's it's in the first 10 minutes of this movie, probably even sooner. It's probably in the first five minutes where they are in the sane asylum. First of all, best joke in the movie they're dropping off the Christmas gifts to everybody, and they're saying "Merry Christmas." And then he drops off the one and says "Happy Birthday," and the guy's dressed as Jesus Christ. Yes, yep. So, solid joke. But <laughs> you get to Billy. They give some little backstory about how Billy's crazy, and you just see him pull a candy cane out of his mouth that he has sucked to a sharp point. And in my brain, I said, "If this guy uses a candy cane to kill somebody, this is the greatest thing I've ever watched in my entire life." And sure enough, you got your about wish. <laughs> three minutes later, he's killing people with a candy cane. He's literally like decapitating somebody with an ice skate just by yeah. throwing it across the room. Like it is so over the top and unreasonable how these kills happen throughout the movie. And I guess that that's my problem, too, is like that I'm sitting there and I'm like, I love that he killed someone with a candy cane in the ice skate, but the whole Agnes story just doesn't add up. <laughs> like, it's so weird. So I feel like we could have done without that. I feel like we didn't need two killers. I feel I, like we could have been fine with yellow skin Billy. But I'm also like, it's funny because I forgot that there was two killers until yeah. the flashback. So as I'm watching it and like writing down notes, I, I'm like, who is killing these people because it seems like the insane asylum stuff that it's cutting to is happening in real time. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like this is like weird flashbacks to what's happening, but I guess maybe it is. And then they finally tell the story of the incest baby of Agus. And I'm like, I feel like I remember that Agus becomes a thing again. But in my head, I was like, is Agnes like, do they like, go and find Agnes at the hospital. I remember this ended in a hospital for no reason. Yeah. And then like it's revealed and I'm like, Oh, right. There's two of them. Yep. Thank you. Scream. You've introduced <laughs> this. It's so funny. It, when scream came out and two killers showed up, that was like the most earth shattering thing. And now it's just like, of course it's two killers. Like that just became the way to do it. So I, I just, I don't know, man. This this movie is absolutely bonkers. To look at the cast list, and maybe not even at the time, but to see like where these actresses began and and went. Like we've got Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who I think is definitely not at the level she is now. But but there was a period of time where she was. A in almost everything and yeah. B what like I remember both two of my friends being like she is the hottest girl that has ever acted <laughs> in history like she was like you know how you always have like that big celebrity crush yeah it was like almost half of my guy friends she was their celebrity crush out of the movies that I've seen her character is just it's like the antithesis of of like the bitchy drunk girl 
And just the entire group, I do love that each of them have their little cliche stereotype. Katie Cassidy, who is kind of our final girl. She's dealing with her boyfriend cheating on her, which we fucking open with. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. No, it it, uh, it doesn't waste any time. I mean, you know who plays the house mother, right? It's it's she's from the original. Yeah. I can't remember her name. She's um, also uh, we talked about her already once on this show because she was the mom in Great News. That's right. Oh, my God. The show that's so forgettable. I forgot that she played the mom in it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, Michelle. So, we got Michelle Trackenberg. Yes. To me, she will always be Harriet the Spy. <laughs> Lacey Kubert. Chabert. Chabert, Kubert, whatever. I'm hoping one day, one day, we will have a big enough audience that we will get Lacey Chabert on this show. Because she is definitely one of the Hall of Fame Hallmark Christmas movie queens. Oh, I mean, I'm sure. She's done 18 of them. But yeah, I don't have too many notes written down. I have forgotten about all the eyeball stuff. So when the Very first one happens... Very focused on the eyes, dude. Yeah. Very focused on the eyes. And they don't really give a motivation to There's that. There's no reason for it. <laughs> the only other thing that I can really think of is just like, like I said, I like this movie. It's fun. You said something that's wild to me. Yeah. That this is like a movie where like you're like, ooh, my friends haven't seen this. Let me show it to them. Yeah. And this is this is like firmly even at in Christmas time. I'm like, all right, is no one coming over for the next <laughs> hour and thirty three minutes? All right, I'll I'll put this on, but I don't I don't want anyone walking through this door having to ask questions because I don't know how to explain this. Matt, but you also got to understand, I'm the kind of person that's like, oh, this is our third date. We should sit down and watch Terror Firmer. That is true. And you know what? <laughs> this is why you are more successful at meeting and reining in is that by date three, you're like, this is the Dylan show. Yeah, um, I, dude. For, I mean, you just you kind of got to know who I am. And I like but, weird shit. But I also love Christmas. <laughs> see, and my thing is that I either show the Matt Kelly show before date one even happens. And they're like, <laughs> ooh, too much. or <laughs> Too much Matt Kelly. Or... I subvert the Matt Kelly for so long that I feel trapped and that I can't yeah. ever show the Matt Kelly. <laughs> so like, Hey man, what you see is what you get, dude. We gotta, we gotta get you out of there. I did the whole, uh, I mean, I don't think it's that much of a struggle. Now there are five weekly podcasts where people hear me tell my most intimate <laughs> background. All they have to do is a Google. They Google me and it is, I mean, it is either game on for them or it is game over for me. And it's, I, I mean, <laughs> It's out there. Do you have any other things that you want to add about Black Xmas? I, I mean, I it's mean, something that you love. I feel like I, we haven't said enough, but I also feel like if the people have never seen this movie, it's never going to make sense no, if we talk no, no, about no, it. No. <laughs> so I I don't want to I don't want to spoil it almost cuz again, I saw this movie Way after it had come out, I went to a used uh, movie store called... It was Movie Stop, which was actually an offshoot of GameStop a while back. And you could find... I, w I found many DVDs and Blu-rays there that, like, just you wouldn't find anywhere else. It's where I got my first copy of Behind the Mask, uh, Leslie Vernon, and everything else. And um, I just... I picked this up. It was the unrated DVD, which is actually pretty hard to come by now. You can't find the Blu-ray anywhere. It's out of print. I, I think this movie would serve well with a Screen Factory release where they do a so. deep dive on Black Xmas and what had happened. I always get nervous talking about this movie because it, it eventually leads to me talking about the original. Where my first time watching the original, I really appreciate what it did. But it bores me to tears. Oh, honestly. see, I have been pro the original since the first second I watched it. I thought that the fact that you get no resolution was the most like. Yeah, I love the ending. The, yeah. the heavy breathing at the end. I, I think the ending is amazing. It's spine chilling. I, Everything that leads me up to it. I'm, I'm see, it's, it's a slog to me. dude. And I also think that the image i think that the imagery and this like as much as you were talking about the cinematography in this like i think bob clark did such a great job with these like slow burn unsettling moments yeah like just like the shot of this girl's face 
sucked inside this plastic bag, just sitting in a rocking chair, just going back and forth. And just like every once in a while, just cutting to it. And you're just like, what is ha-? like it is. This is why I like that movie. Actually, here's how I can sum it up. It's like someone made a psychedelic movie and then pulled out all of the psychedelic parts. I obviously have never done mind altering drugs. But I imagine that like when you're when someone's on like mushrooms and they're yeah. seeing all these crazy colors and everything is insane, the person sitting next to them is just seeing <laughs> like a regular empty room and it's almost more disturbing because this other person clearly sees something else that you're not seeing. Yeah. That's how I feel every time I'm watching Black Christmas. Okay. That like there is something else happening that I'm not seeing. And the fact that I'm not seeing it makes it more unnerving to me. <laughs> so, you know what I would like to do, Matt, I would like to come up there and we sit down and watch the original black Christmas. All right. I think that would be a lot of fun. I, my final thoughts on black Xmas 2006 is it's a lot of fun. It's not for everyone. This is not... No. I know I said earlier, this is a movie that I'm like, you haven't seen this? Check this out. I'm not doing that to everyone. I'm yeah. doing that to the people that I know would be like, holy shit, dude, that was insane. Let's talk about it. Like that. Those are the people I'm giving it to. If you want a Christmas movie that's fun, but also a little fucked up, um, there's... there's, there's Blood, gore, incest, adultery, cannibalism. It's all there. It's all in a, a big uh, Christmas cornucopia yeah. for you. So I can't recommend this movie enough for people that know what they're getting into. Yeah, I think that that's fair. But yeah, so... Oh! Oh, yes, I was supposed to remind you of something. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Totally, you totally didn't remember, man! Sorry, you, you referenced them earlier. The Jersey Ghouls. I'm going to be on an episode of the Jersey Ghouls. We're actually recording it the day that this comes out. Um, so it'll be out later this week. We are talking our top 10 Halloween songs. Our... our 10 Halloween song playlists. And I've already warned them that I'm not coming with softballs, my friends. I'm not coming up in there saying Thriller and Monster Mash. As much as I do adore those songs. Matt Kelly, you know me. My Halloween playlist is about 400 songs deep. And now I have to sit there and figure out which 10 I want to talk about. But I know it's going to turn into, Dylan, you need to calm down and keep this to 10. And (laughs) be like yeah but have you heard uh I, trick, the entire trick-or-treat soundtrack from fast way that's perfect happy halloween dylan happy halloween matt oh whoa listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.